Larian Studios has put the fear of mind flayers deep into the brains of many people with the release of Baldur's Gate 3. The way that the mind flayer tadpole crawls its way inside of you and slowly, yet painfully, takes control. Changing you, bending you to the will of the Elder Brain, and making you nothing more than another drone in its hive of psychic monsters. And while many creatures cannot be turned into mind flayers traditionally, that isn't quite the full truth anymore with recent publishings of Dungeons & Dragons content. And today, we are talking about a powerful, dangerous, and outright nightmarish dragon that defies all boundaries of what was good in this world. Today, we discuss the monstrous Elder Brain Dragon and its place in the list for today's TPK or Bust. So to open this up, the Elder Brain Dragon is rated at a 22 CR monster with insane stats and overpowered abilities to boot, but as with all dragons on this list, I will make sure to try to keep the information over its inflated stats and empowered abilities in check with the other dragons for a fair rating. With that reminder, let's jump right into the most hilarious threat to throw at any party of nearly any high level. For its offensive capabilities, the Elder Brain Dragon starts with an absolutely wild multi-attack option, with one bite, two claw, and even a tentacle attack. Now, a reminder that as a Game Master, you can order your attacks as you see fit, making them more or less effective, and raising your odds of striking or killing. So moving forward, and as a reminder for later, the Elder Brain Dragon is extraordinarily smart, and it is going to use all of its abilities to the height of its capacity when needed. First off, that tentacle attack is unique among other dragons. While other dragons get a tail attack, its tentacle attack replaces that feature, dealing an average 12 psychic on hit. Yes, not physical, psychic. With that to hit modifier of plus 15 and a reach of 15, both of which are scary when you look at them on paper, but when you reduce that to hit modifier down based on its CR rating, it's about the same as other dragons, and again, it replaces the tail feature which already had a 15 foot reach. But the reason we're talking about this is because the tentacle attack also gets a grapple for free on a successful hit. With an escape DC of 18, many players won't be able to make that more than once or twice, if ever. But even more than that, the Elder Brain Dragon can grab up to four people at the same time. And this attack, being only one-fourth of its full combination of melee attacks, is a devastating opening move, able to bring targets easily within its reach, and make attacks at advantage with its other three combos. Speaking of those other combo moves, the Elder Brain Dragon gets a Bite Attack average damage of 30, and two Claw Attack damages of an average of 22, most of which might strike at advantage, and because of that, they will have increased chances of criticals. The Elder Brain Dragon has some of the best scaled up melee damage options I've ever seen. With its total average damage of 63 between all four attacks, many of which land far more easily than other dragons, this is just out of this world. Literally. Part of this conversation is that it gets a fourth attack, while other dragons get a bite bite claw, other dragons just get to breath attack once, this dragon has the option to attack four times in a round, and the argument that can be made is that it only gets this because its CR is so high, and I don't disagree with that line of thought, but keeping the unique tentacle attack still doesn't change the fact that the tail attack replacement, the tentacle is just everything you want from a threat as a GM. It does solid damage, it's a strange damage type, it's, it's a free grapple, it's just desserts for the dragon so far. It's not the damage that we're talking about, it's not the DPS that we're talking about. It's the usefulness, the versatility, and the flexibility of having the option of reaching out, snagging somebody, and pulling them in close for that bite attack. Speaking of at-range abilities, the Elder Brain Dragon has a funny little surprise for all those players who only want to stay at range. With easily its most powerful and complicated ability, its tadpole breath needs a bit of an introduction. So first, breaking this massive wall of text down into bite-sized parts, we'll get into the details afterwards. First, it has a 120-foot cone of range that maxes out at 15 feet wide. It's a massive and excessive reach on this breath attack. The saving throw is a DC 22 constitution saving throw. Pretty high all things considered, but remember this is a CR 22 creature. With an average damage of 55 psychic, you might be asking yourself why is the damage so low, and we'll get to that later. 
Although undeads and constructs can't be affected by the secondary effects, the breath attack is made from a writhing mass of brine, mind flayer tadpoles, and psychic energy, infecting those who fail the saving throw with a stranger than normal mind flayer parasite. At the start of the creature's turn, an infected creature takes an average of 16 psychic damage, getting another saving throw to fight off the wriggling infection. But unlike normal saving throws, it's not going to take one, or even two, but three successful saving throws to rid yourself of the parasite. All at DC 22 constitution, save or not, you're also always going to be taking a minimum of three rounds of that damage. All while fighting the Elder Brain Dragon. You can see why the damage is a bit reduced on the upfront damage from the breath attack. In addition, the ways to cleanse the parasite are limited, and while technically the players shouldn't be able to metagame and know how to fix it specifically at this stage, that means that unless a player takes a wild swing on how to fix it with like a medicine check, or even a spell or an ability, they may end up being too late to actually fix the problem even if they have the ability to. A player who heals more than 40 points from a single source of magical healing, or is a target of the Remove Curse effect, also cleanses the parasite, stopping the growing infection by killing the tadpole. By failing to clear this condition, however, and falling in battle from damage, that's only the beginning of something more grotesque. Alongside this, any infected creature that is reduced to 0 HP is automatically stabilized, and over the next 6 d12 hours remains unconscious as they begin to turn into a full-fledged Mind Flayer, rising to join its new master's command. A creature under this effect can only be reverted back to normal, slash prevented, from turning into a Mind Flayer this way with the use of a wish spell or equivalent magic. Whew! Alrighty, so... That's the gist of the ability, and as you can probably tell, this breath attack is already pretty broken. Not to mention, its recharge rate is the normal 5 to 6 like most dragons. Its range is just laughing in the face of melee characters. The saving throw for the CR is quite high, and to make it worse, it never actually states that targets who succeed against the Mind Flare Parasite, or even manage to cleanse it, they're not immune to this effect. In fact, the dragon can hit you over and over and over and over again with this ability until it gets what it wants, and it's completely overpowered in terms of combat potential. The one weakness, quote unquote, that this breath attack might even have is that constitution is a very, very popular stat in D&D, probably the second most powerful stat second to dexterity. Many characters pump it higher than almost any other stat, and rarely do they dump it. Many classes even get it as their proficient saving throw. Taking the average 55 psychic damage you take from the initial breath attack, and minimum 3 rounds to cleanse it, at 16 damage each, you're looking at a grand total of 103 average damage over 3 rounds. That's not to account melee damage, or another breath attack, or anything else hitting you. One breath attack, 103 damage on a failed saving throw. But no, 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 we're not done yet, because regardless of the dragon's ability to dominate the battlefield during its turns, and even damaging the players on their turns, it can perform between the turns with its legendary actions. For one legendary action, it performs a tentacle attack, which, as the replacement for many dragon's tail attacks, it overperforms in terms of usefulness and the strange psychic damage type. And for two, it gets the ability to shatter concentration blasting a grappled target with mental energy, dealing an average of 19 psychic damage to a creature it's grappling, and ending an effect it's concentrating on with no saving throw to resist. I think the ability, as strong as it is, is actually quite fair. A creature needs to be grappled first by the Elder Brain Dragon, followed by it using two-thirds of its legendary action points to break the concentration of that creature. I love this ability for a few reasons, but the flavor of it the, the flavor of the Elder Brain Dragon just grabbing you, bringing you in here. real close, and just shattering your mind in an instant. It's hilarious to me. <laughs> in addition to its damage skills, its other passives like Siege Monster and Unusual Nature, the dragon can go just about anywhere, break into anything, and otherwise not easily be deterred by any normal means, 
in land, air, or sea. Making this monster just a walking nightmare incarnate. Or, rather, flying. I could go on and on and on about the Elder Brain Dragon's offensive power, its high damage, the saving throws, the damage over time, the reach, the legendary actions, the range, the sheer volume of things it does in one stat sheet is ridiculous for the 5th edition setting. And for all of those reasons, and many, many more, I award this dragon a 10 out of 10 for offensive skills. And honestly, the abilities speak for themselves. This dragon, CR22 or not, is without a doubt completely dominating the offensive skill category. Next up, with skills, the Elder Brain Dragon has some, albeit inflated, above average looking stats. Sitting at 27 Strength, 13 Dexterity, 25 Constitution, 21 Intelligence, 19 Wisdom, and 24 Charisma. Again, these stats are a little inflated compared to the other CR 14 through 18-ish adult dragons on this list. But seeing the Intelligence and Charisma score so high, and remembering this is a creature with the mental might of the legendary Elder Brain, and the mobility and strength of a dragon. It sends shivers of excitement and fear down me. With its proficient skills in Arcana, Insight, and Perception, it cannot be easily tricked or deceived by magical, social, or physical means, like stealth. And even further, with a whopping 28 passive perception, the Elder Brain Dragon is just specced further into efficient and deadly design. With a flying speed of 80 and a walking speed of 40, nothing really stands out in this dragon's movement options, if, sadly, there is no other burrow or swim speed. Well, technically, it has no layer actions to speak of on the sheet in Fizzbin's Treasury of Dragons. I think the implication is that, unlike the traditional Elder Brain, which is always going to be found in the lair, the whole point of going through the trouble of capturing and taking over the body of the dragon is to not be in the lair anymore. It's to be a mobile general for the Mind Flayer army to overwhelm enemies who dare to face it with both psychic and physical might melded together. No longer in a mobile threat, it's a flying fortress of death and infection, spreading the Mind Flayer parasite across the lands without equal. Although I don't see an argument against why you shouldn't give them layer actions if you find them there. But there's a plethora of other problems revolved around that conversation, not the fact that they could be in their lair, which I'll cover further later. With its lair discussion being pushed back, we can wrap up the skills segment with a few more short notes. Its immunity to psychic is rare, sure, but not unusable. In addition, it has immunity to the charmed and frightened conditions, which are helpful in a pinch for sure, but specifically, it's a helpful deterrent to the bards of the world who come up with the, oh yeah, let's just sleep with it solution when the problem pops up. <laughs> its skills are expertly picked, but are also on the same power level as other dragons when those dragons are scaled up to CR 22, which leads me to the final skill rating. For excellent skill choices, a great stat distribution, that's right, I didn't miss the lovely plus one dexterity bonus it gets, and some handy condition immunities. The Elder Brain Dragon easily earns a 7.1 out of 10, a hearty above average, but nothing off the charts. Again, the main emphasis here is that the skills it's proficient in are all ultra handy for the Elder Brain Dragon in and outside of combat. Next up is its defensive features, which on first glance looks quite sufficient for those inflated stats. With a whopping HP pool of 350, the Elder Brain Dragon is looking like it gets an additional 16 HP per point of CR. The reason I break it down like this is while other dragons, like the tankier Dragon Turtle, gets an average of 17 HP per CR. And other dragons, like the blue dragon, has an HP of 14 per CR. You can see that CR to CR, the Elder Brain Dragon is a tanky threat for sure, but sadly, unlike the blue dragon and other dragons who have quite a bit of HP to play with, this HP comes at a steep cost for the Elder Brain Dragon, because its AC is 17, which for its CR is abysmally low. Many characters of level 13 through 18 often have a plus 9 or more to hit for their main attack options, leaving it up to a dice roll of 8 or higher to hit AC. Not including instances of advantage or other buffs or debuffs, 
that's a 65% of the time the dragon is going to be hit. And at these kind of levels, this leaves the dragon soaking damage like a sponge in water, which is not great for it. <laughs> Look, it's not to say it, it doesn't have other things to help it avoid damage or spells. It has plus 14 to constitution saving throws, plus 12 to intelligence saving throws, plus 11 to wisdom, and plus 14 to charisma. But even though it has relevant saving throws to avoid the worst effects of many devastating spells and abilities, even then it's not the same as preventing that damage or guaranteeing that it doesn't just roll a 1 against those saving throws. Well, kind of. On that last part specifically, and unlike many other dragons, the Elder Brain Dragon doesn't just get three, but it gets four legendary resistances per day. For those of you who don't know, I don't traditionally cover legendary resistances because, well, they're kind of... A lot of people have sort of mixed feelings about them, but legendary resistances practically just say if a monster fails a saving throw, the GM may instead use a Legendary Resistance and succeed on that saving throw. And while many, many, many other monsters only get two or three, the Elder Brain Dragon gets four. It's a powerful buff, and it feels very on theme for this nightmare with wings. <laughs> while its defensive rating keeps jumping up and down, looking at that extra Legendary Resistance, it's a bit of a bind I find myself in. On the one hand, it might be able to use none of these resistances in combat. If it's fighting a bunch of fighters and rangers and rogues, how often is it going to be using these? But on the other hand, if it's fighting a bunch of monks and spellcasters and druids, it may blow through all four in the first round. I, I, th I think looking at this like some sort of weird extra AC buff is the best way to like approach this generally. But it also comes with the conversation of what kind of fighter is the dragon? What kind of actions does it want to take the most often? And I wouldn't call it a defensive fighter either, but I want to do something different than normal. I want to talk about the reason why I'm going to rate the defensive rating as it is after I talk about the flavor segment. So we're going to jump right into the flavor segment of the Elder Brain Dragon. For Game Masters, you have everything you need on paper to make players fear two of the greatest monsters in history all at once. The devastating ferocity of a dragon, an ancient and powerful foe, something everyone uses as a cornerstone of adventure and warning, and contesting with the mental might of an elder brain, a force of alien nature so dominating, and a presence of all-consuming confusion, all in one mortifying killer combo. And what's worse than that, and not fully listed, is that the Elder Brain Dragon is still an Elder Brain at the end of the day. And that means hundreds if not thousands of Mind Flayers are under its command at all times. It would, slash could, probably come with dozens of powered up Mind Flayers as its personal guard and hundreds more of drones, all of which are CR7 by themselves, by the way, as a flying and mobile army it can soften up enemies with. That brings into question the history, the motive, the army itself, and the location of the Elder Brain Dragon when combat is fully on the table. When you take an Elder Brain Dragon as a standalone threat, which it normally never would be, it's still an overwhelming force of otherworldly magic and alien mutation. But more so, when taken as it should be, a flying, tanky, hyper-intelligent powerhouse with an army at its beck and call with hundreds of years of knowledge at its tentacle tips, it's a nearly impossible hurdle for players to overcome. Its mind is linked with hundreds of eyes, thousands of minds, and millions of memories to draw back on for information, a malice in thirst for spreading its monstrous form to all life around it, and the means and abilities to follow through with said ambition. I mean, it captured a live dragon and dug its mind and tentacles into its body and mutated it. A full dragon, for God's sakes. 
its force of personality, its charisma is so high that many, many, many players who dare to dump wisdom or intelligence or heck, even charisma, are all going to be prone to maybe even falling for its manipulation. All while being able to read your mind, able to reach far within your psyche, and maybe while it's talking to you, tampering and tinkering with who you are. It's wisdom, nearly flawless, able to read situations and people like a pop-up kid's book. There is no real situation where the Elder Brain Dragon isn't just going to have an edge or a flat-out complete overwhelming advantage. Like I mentioned above, the defensive score doesn't always revolve around stats and abilities, but it also revolves around playstyle. And being realistic, the Elder Brain Dragon is never going to allow itself to be in a position of disadvantage without somebody having careful planning, powerful allies, and a metric buttload of scrolls, potions, weapons, armor, and combat tactics that can possibly be a threat to the Elder Brain Dragon. Its defensive score, with all of this in mind, is just a petrifying 9.8 out of 10. And yes, I fully understand that 1v1 against a party with none of its allies, none of its plans working, it isn't the tankiest, or the best at defending itself from really, really high levels of gameplay. But good luck getting into a position to do that. I mean, it can literally read your mind. It has an army of mind-reading flying monstrosities that convert people on a day-to-day -day basis into more of their army. There is always, always going to be a will and a way to defeat it. Maybe a wild wish spell, a well-organized plan using stealth and a mind-shielding spell, and one really, really OP sneak attack could always do the job. But for 99% of the encounters, this is a game-ending, world-consuming threat that all players need to fear. For flavor, there is no better monster for a high-level campaign. It is worth its weight in diamond in terms of playability, danger, interest, and roleplay potential. For flavor, the Elder Brain Dragon will break the scales of balance here and earn itself a perfect 10 out of 10. It is a powerful, intimidating, skilled, intelligent, and otherwise just ridiculously overpowered monster in most situations. And to nobody's surprise at this point, the Elder Brain Dragon has not only competed, but absolutely obliterated the competition on this list. The stats, the skills, the options, the overwhelming information and abilities at its claws make it the worst nightmare players will never see coming in time. Its grand total value, after looking over all the information, is a supreme 9.2 out of 10, making it the current and foreseeable king of the TPKR bus series. This dragon, unlike every other I've seen, has no clear weakness, no exploit to its tactics, no real direction in which players will have a clear, decisive upper hand. Now this isn't to make it seem impossible to beat. As I said, with a plan, magic, and sheer luck, you can leave the Elder Brain Dragon alone and helpless in a fight, but damn is it going to take skill, luck, and a million other things going right to get there. The Elder Brain Dragon may have dominated both the minds of its victims and this list of dragons, but can any other dragon outperform it in the future? Find out on the next TPK or Bust. And thanks for watching. Hope this helped bring a new nightmare to your sleeping cycle, and I'll see you in the next one.